Hi friends, David here from Above AVL, and in this video, we're looking at Entex EMU software, kind of giving you an update for 2025, because this is one, it came out years ago, it's got kind of a history, um, but overall, it's it's gotten to a pretty good place, and so we're gonna talk about it. Do we like it? Do we hate it? Who's it good for? Who's it not good for? Let's dive in. Okay, so for those who aren't aware, Entech used to have a program called DMXis, which is essentially what EMU is based on. It's, it's very similar to. And DMX has hit a place where it had been around for a long time. Like they were mailing it out to people on CD-ROMs, you know, kind of old, right? And so it hit a point where the software just like, without rewriting it entirely, couldn't really be updated uh, reasonably, okay? And so they decided to start programming it themselves as EMU. And, you know, it gone off to what we would call a little bit of a rough start, meaning that, you know, when it first came out and gosh, for the first two years of its life, it just, it really struggled. It had issues. It was buggy. There were a lot of things that it was missing. Um, but today it's programmatically, it's a lot better. The other thing they finally did, yay, is they got the box out. Okay, so they were initially trying to put out the box, which you can buy uh, basically to unlock EMU, we'll talk about that in a minute, and get DMX out of it. And the box was not around for the longest time, which was so annoying. Like, I, I get it, because at first it was, you know, 2020, 2021, they were trying to come out with this box, and, you know, that was when there were all the chip shortages, and you were just having to re-engineer microchips all the time, and it was not a good time to be putting out a new control-type product like this. So it came out, I believe, this this year, and Entech sent me one, um, so we're gonna evaluate it, but the opinions here are all my own. So while we're at the box, they've kind of done everything right on this box, really. So just like DMXs, I think, there's a three and a five pin DMX, okay? Um, it's a USB device, it has USB-C, which is great, because then if you're on a regular old school USB port, you just use a USB, you know, to USB-C cable. If you're on a laptop that just says USB-C, then a USB-C to USB-C cable. Nice and easy to find, stuff you probably have around, stuff that's everywhere. Then they also have a foot switch uh, port, which is interestingly labeled MIDI foot switch. I'm gonna guess that's probably because it technically converts it to MIDI. That verbiage is a little misleading. That is for a quarter inch foot switch. So like a sustain pedal, sometimes clicky guitar pedals, a single quarter inch switch, okay? That will enable you to move your programs forward and or backwards. Other stuff in the box. So there's the box. Other stuff in the box includes, so they've got some cards in here and I, I think some of these are particular to this serial numbered box. I'm not gonna show you the cards so you don't steal it. But essentially you get 12 months of EMU on one card, okay? So it's a monthly subscription. It's uh, at the time of this recording, I think it's about 10 bucks. And then a discount code. So basically after your one year, you get 30% off in theory forever. Yes, I think. At least as long as you don't cancel, I believe. Um, and then also in the box, let's see, there's a USB-C to USB-C cable, a sticker, um, a DIN mount clip, which probably for most people running EMU will not apply to, and a little book that says read me that I didn't read. Okay, perfect. You got all that, you know, you've got your cards to be able to unlock EMU for a period of time, you've got your box. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks. What do we think about it? Oh, the last thing on the box, sorry, is a network port. Okay, excuse me, sorry. This is awesome. So this is just a network port so that if you need to send out ArtNet to fixtures, network DMX, or to other nodes to get more universes of output, they just built it right in, you know, just USB to a network. But if you're on a laptop, a lot of times there's no network port, so that's just helpful. That's good stuff. So let's look here at the software. So the EMU software itself is a lot like DMXs. So what you basically have is you go to patch and you go ahead and you bring in all of your fixtures. Okay. So you're able to it actually sees Ardent devices on my network, but you're able to go in here. I like channel view you know, bring in your different fixtures, which oops, I don't have this licensed right now, so you don't see all the different brands, but they've got plenty of them. 
you can bring them in, patch them, and you're good to go. All right. And so then you've got your fixtures all patched in here, ready to go. And working with them kind of starts like DMXs if you've used it, but then it does simplify it and take it to a new level where you essentially have just faders for all these lights. It's just like a, a, an audio console, right? Where you have your light and you have all the DMX channels in order and you can click on any of them. You can adjust them like so. You can, I believe, use your scroll wheel. Um, you can also attach MIDI controllers to it as well. Okay, so you adjust things with the different faders, but even better now is when you have one or multiple lights selected, you can actually work with different attributes over here on this attribute man manager, which is really helpful. So like if I want to do the intensity for all of them, boom, I can do that. If I want to position all of them, boom, I can do that and you can see there's a couple different dots there because they're not all in the same place. And so like I could, I can move them together or I can move the separate ones and it's spread across those two. So it's actually really stinking pretty good in terms of adjusting fixtures. Similarly, I've got the star bar wash, which is just four Parkhand like lights. And if I select a color, you see all the colors are changing on those channels and that then outputs to the lights nice and easy. So the thing about Emu is it's really simple. If you wanna do some really complex things with programming or running things live and on the fly kind of as you go, Emu is probably not the console for you. But where Emu has always you know, been geared at and where it's best at is just, hey, you have songs in order, you can rearrange them every night, and you play through them and you just click, 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 go through them, you know, hit a foot pedal, have backing tracks triggering them because Emu has a VST plugin or you can send it MIDI. And then you, you put everything in the programs tab here. You just do like different songs. Okay. And then you have different parts of the songs and you just play through them. Some of the beautiful things about Emu are that it's very musical. So, Everything, all of the speeds of effects, which are made here with the oscillator or the sound tracker from a sound input, but everything on the oscillator is based on music. So you've got bars and it breaks it up into beats within that. You have master controls. So the master BPM is always going to match what you're playing. If you're playing with tracks, you can sync that over. And if you adjust that BPM, all of those oscillators, all of those chases or effects, they all scale with it. So you slow it down, they all slow down. You speed it up, they all speed up. They're always in tune with your music perfectly. And that's really what works well with Emu. They've also added uh, groups. So again, can select, you know, individual lights or can select them in groups and be able to work with them. I think in the past, my biggest issues with Emu were that it had some instability issues, okay? And there were some definite bugs. Today, I've been talking with some of my favorite tech support people at Entech, not just today, but over the past few months, I've been working in the software, playing around with it. And at least from my perspective, a lot of that is gone and they're now focused on adding new features. It's very stable, which is good. It's exactly what you want if you're kind of a gigging musician. Would I recommend Emu here in 2025? I, I think we do. Well, you have to be the right person in the right use case. And of course, that's why there's a demo version you can download and play around with. You know, it's simplistic and kind of old school in how you control the lights for the most part, you're kind of forced into this uh, programs and banks. Uh, so banks being songs and programs being like the cues, the individual lighting scenes, you're, you're forced into using that layout. There's not really any other way to use it. And so if you're not doing like songs and parts of songs that you then rearrange for a given show, like I'm just dragging them around here, then this probably isn't the console or software for you. But if you're looking for a way to just control, you know, a small amount to a pretty decent amount of lighting and you're not going to do a ton of like really fancy programming, but you want it to be simple to play back in order, matching your set list, then you may want to give Emu a look. You know, is it perfect? No, nothing is right. But the Entech team has done a really good job improving this software. It's a lot better than it used to be. And it, it really seems stable and good. And, it, and if you, it fits kind of what you like to do, if you 
you know, dig the way that it works, the way that you're kind of working with individual faders and things like that. And, you know, the way that you're working with songs and parts of songs, then if that way of working works for you and works for the way you want to play things back, then Emu can be a real win for you. The last thing I'd probably harp on is the cost, right? People go, oh man, I hate subscriptions, don't want a subscription, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, if you haven't looked around, it's 2025, everything's more expensive than it used to be, right? And so when I look at entry level software that we'd recommend other than Emu, it's either gonna be Lightkey, which is also a subscription, or it's going to be my DMX5 at the time of this recording. And you know, for the cost of my DMX5, you can buy years of Emu before, you know, paying monthly before you come up to that cost. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, yes, it's a monthly cost and a lot of us hate subscriptions, like from the software developer side, because I work with different software developers, like I understand how much easier it makes their life to do a subscription. Um, instead of a one-time purchase. And it makes it so that you can get started at an affordable level, try something out, play with it a little, not put out a ton of money to do that. And I think if you look at it that way, you know, say, hey, what are my alternatives? What are other good software that would work for me? You'll see that it really is a pretty reasonable deal for what it is, and it's not overly expensive. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What do you think? Let us know in the comments, we appreciate you. And if you wanna check out Emu, of course, we've got the box, uh, the bundle at aboveavl.com. We'd love to get it into your hands and help you uh, program awesome lighting for your next events. Need some audio gear, need some video gear? Hey, we've got all that too. You can always email us at gear at aboveavl.com. We'll put that nice and big on the screen. And you can check everything out at our website. We'd love to help you find the perfect gear for your needs and get it in your hands. If that sounds good, head over to aboveavl.com. We'd love to help. See ya.